vision um, in me, a ministry that actually we want to bring women together. And so we want, we've decided um, as a team that actually for every month we're going to do a prophetic encounter meeting for you women. Because who knows, women have swords and we need to use them and be powerful in the kingdom of God. Amen. So let's just stand. I just want to kick off in prayer, especially for, obviously, you know, um, our queen has passed away. And I just want to honor her for the remarkable woman of God that she was. She was a woman of faith. She was beautiful. And she reigned for so many years, longer than any of the monarchs reigned. And so I just want to, um, I think we've got like a little a video clip I just want to play. reigned during a period of unprecedented technological, social, and political change. When she took the throne, there had been debate over whether her coronation should even be televised. By the time of her death, she'd recorded a comedy sketch for broadcast on Twitter. Oh, really? Please. As head of state, she presided over the end of Britain's once mighty global empire and watched the United Kingdom's fractious exit from the European Union. My government intends to work towards a new partnership with the European Union based on free trade and friendly cooperation. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor was born in London on April 21st, 1926. At the age of 10, her father unexpectedly became king after her uncle abdicated, making his eldest daughter the heir apparent. In 1947, she married Prince Philip of Greece and the following year, their son Charles was born. In 1952, upon the death of her father, Elizabeth became queen at the age of 25. Amid cultural and political upheaval in the second half of the 20th century, the monarchy's image in British society shifted dramatically. Moments of pageantry and spectacle, like the fairy tale wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer, were quickly soured by the unraveling of the marriage and Elizabeth's perceived lack of empathy with her popular daughter-in-law. But Queen Elizabeth retained the nation's affection. A new generation of royals entered the scene, coming across as more in tune with the times. Although in the waning years of her life, controversy arose again over the family's relationship with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, and her son Prince Andrew's association with the convicted sex offender, Jeffrey Epstein. The final years of her reign saw domestic political turbulence too, as Scotland debated independence and Brexit reopened tensions over Northern Ireland. While she had no official say in government matters, the Queen met every week with Britain's Prime Minister for a confidential discussion. She worked with 15 Prime Ministers over 70 years of dedicated service. Caroline Hyde, Bloomberg. Amen. Let's just pray for Queen Elizabeth and the royal families and... Let's just lift the royals up in prayer. And so, Father, I just lift them up to you right now, oh God, as King Charles takes the throne, Lord. I pray right now that you would meet him where he's at, oh God. Father, I pray right now that he would begin to know who you are, oh God, that he would take on um, you, oh God, that like as his mother did, oh God, that she believed who you were, oh God. Father, I ask right now that you would meet him where he's at, oh God. Father, Lord, I'm asking right now that you would just send someone in his path, oh God. And so, Father, we lift the royals up to you tonight, oh God, and we just pray peace upon them, peace upon the land, peace upon the nation, oh God. In your mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Chief Cornerstone, no other foundation can we build upon. Now philosophy, nor the wisdom of men, hold the ground. Is
is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand Though everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's never left me down He's faithful
focus on the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and that as we just sing this again we just we're refocusing our eyes we're, we're placing our eyes on Jesus and we're saying Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Jesus take your place let all the other names let all the other names looks like let all the other names all the other names fade away whatever your day has been like the, let all the other names let it fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Jesus take your place place we welcome you here come Jesus come and have your way come and have your way you are the king of kings the Lord
to invite you guys just to speak in tongues at this present moment. And if you can't speak in tongues yet, yeah, just put the name of Jesus on your mouth. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. Trust in Jesus' name, Christ alone, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love.
Cause I just wanna speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus I just want to speak I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there's peace within Speak the name. I just, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all, over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus shout Jesus shout Jesus shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets 
as I was thinking about tonight, I was reminded of Matthew 6, 21. It reads like this, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I don't know if you're aware, but tonight we're talking about matters of the heart. To put it simply, Matthew 6, 21 reminds us that there is nothing more valuable than heaven. Heaven is where we will spend eternity with God. But it's so easy to get wrapped up in some earthly rewards, isn't it? It's easy to get wrapped up in the recognition of our achievements. It's easy to get wrapped up in our wealth. It's easy to get wrapped up in what others might think about us. We might be chasing something that's taking our priority over God. Or maybe there's some of us that's walked in here tonight that are dealing with things that are preventing us from giving God our entire heart. Maybe there's things that we're dealing with, bitterness, unforgiveness, broken relationships. Maybe there are some chains that are keeping us locked up to our past. But you know what? God is not a God who is impressed with stuff. He's not impressed with our earthly rewards. And He certainly doesn't want us walking around not dealing with issues from the past. He wants to be the greatest treasure in our heart. He wants to unlock the purpose and the plan that He has for our life. And He can only do that if we give Him the first place in our heart. So I just wanna pray tonight because there's a few things going on right now and I just feel like the Spirit of God is here, that worship was amazing. Worship was amazing. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that you're here. We thank you for every single woman that's walked into this building, Lord. Lord, they're not here by accident. They're here by divine appointment, Lord. Lord, they are not going to walk out the same way they came in. Lord, you know our heart tonight. You know if there are things that we need to deal with. God, we came here to do business with you tonight, Lord. Lord, we're not here for a show. We're not here for a performance. This is not about us, God. This is about a powerful encounter with you. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you will come and you will meet with each of us tonight. God, let us not walk out the same way we came in. Lord, I pray that chains will be broken. I pray that there will be restoration in relationships. Lord, I pray that there will be healing tonight. Lord, deal with us tonight, Lord, deal with us. We surrender everything to you, God. We surrender everything to you. We ask for all of this in your name, Jesus, amen. 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 You can take your seat. Wow, there's so many of you. I'm sure there weren't that many faces when we walked in. So good to see all of you. You know, at the beginning of this week, we saw a woman becoming the nation's newest prime minister. And yesterday we witnessed the longest reigning monarch complete her service here on earth. You can't let anyone tell us that women don't play an integral part in this nation. God is not done with us yet. Do we believe that God is not done with us? It's an absolute honor and privilege to have you with us at our very first Radiance Evening. You might, you might have registered online or you might have been dragged here by a friend. Um, whatever the reason, I can tell you, you're not here by accident. You are here by divine appointment. We prayed for every single woman that walked through this building tonight. We fasted, we prayed, and we are believing, we are expecting. We're not here for a show. You know, I prayed we're not here for a show. We're here for a true encounter with Jesus. If you have traveled really far to be here, can you just give me, a, give me a wave? We don't take it for granted that people are joining us on a Friday night. Can you just give me a wave? I mean, is anyone out of London? Anyone traveled out of London? Car oh, yes. We just want to bless you. I saw two hands. Is there more than two hands? There we go, you just scored our very first Radiance t-shirt. Look at this, check this out. 
we just want to bless you. And I'm sure I saw another hand. Who was the other hand? Oh, Carol. <laughs> You don't have to have travelled far for this one. This is our tote bag. Would anyone like one of these? Yeah. I'm just going to, oh, look at this. This is an eager face. Yeah. I'm going to give you that. Do you know what we've got? Um, so that, that's our Radiance merch. It literally came out today. If you would like more of that, we've got a merch table outside. So go and, go and have fun with that. It's going to be available after um, our service. So um, tonight is not actually a one-off event. As Keisha said, this is the beginning of regular monthly meetups for women across London. We want you to join with, with us for the next Radiance event. Put it in your calendar. It's going to be on the 7th of October. We've got a clip that we want to share with you. Let's have a look at what's coming up. putting the world on notice today that we will not stay silent, we will not stay hidden, we will not stay still because there is a mission. It's time for the church to rise up, speak up, and take a seat at that table. My Bible tells me that he even prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And so it's time for the church to take a seat at the table. It's not the enemy's table, it's in the presence, but it's God's table. It says he prepares a table before my enemies in the presence of them for me. This church, the world has no say on what happens in this church. The world has no say on what we do and no say on the growth of the church of Jesus Christ. It's not their table. This church, this is the church of Jesus Christ. It's his table. And my Bible tells me that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We are putting the world on notice today that we will not stay silent. That is the incredible Bianca Norman. So get registered, 7th of October. You don't want to miss it. We believe here at Elam Wimbledon, along with our Rig Nation family, that life is meant to be journeyed together. We need a sisterhood to call our own, and we believe that great and powerful things happen when the house of God is filled with a sea of women that are praying, that are prophesying, and having powerful encounters with God. Radiance was born out of a vision that the mama of this house had. She wanted to create a space for women to have a real encounter with Jesus. She has been fasting. She has been praying and seeking the Lord about this. She's a woman with a powerful testimony. Can we please give our very own Prophetess Keisha a warm welcome as she comes to share this evening. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Wow. Were you blessed by worship? Because I was. Thank you, Gloria. You are amazing. And Esther for teaming up tonight to take us into the presence of God. But before I start, I just feel a song on my heart. And um, I just want you to stand and sing it with me, if that's okay. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise, and to your lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Amen. Lord, I thank you.
thank you that you are awesome in this place, oh God. Lord, I thank you that your presence is already here. Lord, I thank you that you've gone before us tonight, oh God, and made a way for radiance, oh God. Lord, I thank you, oh God, that you have drawn people out, oh God, to come to hear your word, what you have for them, oh God. And Father, I pray right now that every word spoken in this place will pierce every heart, that will open every ear, oh God, that will touch the heart of many, oh God. And so, Father, Lord, we thank you that you are awesome in this place. Amen. Amen. It's good to declare God's awesome. We need a smaller pulpit, John. I feel like I need a box. <laughs> um, I just want to um, bring 2 Kings 4 8 with, to you tonight. I feel God's laid a word on my heart that I want to share with you. And so I'm just going to read it. It says, now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable wealthy woman. As she persuaded him to eat some food, so it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us and put a bed for him there, a table and a chair, a lampstand, so it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. Elisha is the prophet in this town. And this wealthy woman, she was rich. She was probably well known in Shunem for having money. It was probably like the Kensington of London. She was probably well known. And she looks to make room for him in her house. Why? One, she recognizes who this man got. He had presence of the Holy One on him. He was a, a holy man. And we need to recognize when Jesus is in the room. We need to recognize those whose hand God is upon. She was wealthy. The gospel is not just for the poor, but it's for the rich. Not every person who's rich has needs. Um, money doesn't buy happiness. We've all heard that, that phrase. But she had needs. This wealthy woman had needs. And so she made room for God in her life. And I believe tonight that some of you probably need to make room for God in your, in your life. There was an investment in her future. You know, some of the things that actually we invest in are probably more important to us than actually investing in God, making room for God, making time for God. And so in her house, she had to create a space for God. She had to create space for God because it would have created space for her miracle. Amen? Amen. 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 So she made room for God in her life. You need to make room for God. This was an investment in her future. She had to purchase items in the room. I believe she probably went to Ikea. She bought a Pax wardrobe. She probably bought a little Pax lampstand. And she created a room, physical room, in her life for God. She knew that's what she had to do. She had to create space. She had to put her house in order to get her husband on board. Some of you are physically going to have to make room. Some of you are going to need more quality time with the Lord. Maybe spend it in the word and in prayer. Because in your spiritual life, you're not going to be strong if you don't invest in God. Who knows, if you're not strong in prayer or strong in the word, you can be defeated. That's when the enemy is going to get hold of you and he's going to steal what you own. He's going to come in and going to grab it and going to take it from you if you have not made space for God in your life. Sometimes we are really more passionate about the things we invest in. You know, the bag you've just purchased. Maybe it's Louis Vuitton, whatever, that designer bag that you take. You know, sometimes you look at items and invest more stuff in items than you do looking to God. You know, his space, your space is God's space. So, one, you need to make a physical room that you need to go each morning and spend time with him. You need to find your war room. You need to find your secret place, and we need to make room. For others, this may not be a physical room, but this may look like switching off the TV or switching off your phone and putting on some worship, getting lost in with God, taking, going to that secret place with God. Like when um, I'm really uh, with God and I'm worshiping, he takes me to a ballroom. And I'll share this with you. Like when I'm worshiping with God, he takes me into this holy place. And it's an old-fashioned ballroom. 
and I'm there as a little child and I'm just dancing freely with God. You know, the, the scriptures dance with me, O lover of my soul. And he takes me there and in this ballroom, it's just me and him, nobody else, that secret place, that intimacy place with him. Why? Because I've created space for God. And there he, he just brings his hand in. I can see it now. Like he just brings his hand and God's so big that it is literally just the fingertip that I can hold. But I'm holding God. I'm holding on to what God has. And we're dancing and it's lover of my soul. Dance with me. Take me away with you, oh God. Creating space for God. But it wasn't about the man. It wasn't about Elisha who was coming. It was about the presence of God that was within him. She recognized who he was. She created, I want to call it a penthouse. She created a room in her house. It wasn't just a basement. It wasn't just the room next to the kitchen. It wasn't just an empty bedroom. But she put him on top of the house. She created a space on top of the house. A modern day penthouse. Why? Because I believe it was the upper room. And that is from there the anointing flows. From the upper room, the anointing flows down. And I believe for her, that was her space that she created for God. And so it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, he stood before him and he said to him, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, no, I'm good. I'm good. I've got this. I don't have anything I need. And Gehazi answered, then what is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son. Her husband is old. So he said, call her. Then he called her. He stood in the doorway. And then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord. Do not lie to your maidservant. She didn't receive it. Why? Because there was too many disappointments in her life. She'd been disappointed time and time again. She was like, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that if you can't keep your promise. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. But the woman conceived and bore a son. And when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her, her heart was to serve God. But in doing so, she was served and her need was met. You can never outgive God. When you serve him out of a pure heart, he will always meet your need. Amen. Who knows that in your life? You know, when you really put out everything for God, God is going to meet every need that you have. She didn't want to bring her need before God because she was so afraid of being disappointed. Can I tell you, too many of you are afraid of God disappointing you. In this season, you have walked away from what is available for you in case you get hurt. But I want to declare that by this time next year, this time next year, you will have your miracle. Amen. This time next year, you will have your miracle. <laughs> In fact, actually, if you all got your phones, I want you to take out your phones right now. Everyone's got a phone. Take it out. Wave it above your head if you've got your phone. I want to see you waving your phones. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to take a selfie right now. Okay, this is a momentum moment. I want you to take a selfie. Why? Because this time next year, you will not be the same person. This time next year, you are going to be in a very different place to what you are now. Amen. Are you all taking selfies? Yeah. <laughs> this time next year, you will be in a different place. This time next year, you will have a different job. This time next year, some of you will have new relationships. Amen. Some of you, like the Shunammite, will be holding a baby. Amen. But I declare, this time next year, every person in this place will have a testimony of the goodness of God Amen. in their life if they make room for God. Amen. Amen. As the child grew, now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, my head, my head. He had a headache. So dad said to the servant, carry him to his mother, like any father would, eh? Take you to the mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat her on his knees till noon, and then he died. 
And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, it is well. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So, as, so it was when the man of God saw her from afar, he said to his servant Gehazi, look, there's a Shunammite woman. Go run and meet her and say to her, are you okay? Is it well with you? How is your husband? How is it well with your child? And she answered, it is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and not, has not told me. So the boy dies. What do we do when the promise of God dies in our life? God's given her the miracle, but the enemy has tried to steal it. Can I tell you, the only one that can fix your problems is the one with the nail-pierced hands. Not your doctor, not your counsellor, not your friend. You have to get to Calvary because Jesus paid for everything you need. Your faith has to take you on a journey from the place of Shunem to the place of rest. To, from Shunem of the place of rest to Calvary, the place of the cross. Your blessing may have seemed like it has died, but there is a bigger blessing on its way. The Shuna white woman, she doesn't get caught up in funeral arrangements. She doesn't have a pity party. In fact, when Gehazi asks her what is wrong, she says it is well. Why? Because she knew that he couldn't fix her problems. Stop telling people your problems who cannot fix them. They cannot help you. Right, I want you to turn to your neighbor and go, shh. Now turn to the other neighbor and go, it is well. <laughs> Your declaration season has to be, it is well. This season has to be, it is well. There is one who can solve your problem, and his name is Jesus. So she takes her son back to the space she created for God. She knew that she couldn't just lay him on the sofa. She knew she could not lay him anywhere else but on the bed of the prophet. She knew she had to take him back to the space that she created for God because in that space becomes your miracle. Can I tell you the same way you got it in prayer is the same way you keep it in prayer. And if you got it in prayer, the devil has come to steal it. Then the only way you will keep it in prayer is to find your room. When Elisha came into the house, there was a child lying dead on his bed. He went in, therefore, shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. He went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and in forth the house and again went up, stretched himself out on him. And when the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite woman. So he called her. And when she came into him, he said, pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet and bowed to the ground. And then she picked her son up and went out. Some of you need to shut the door. Amen. The prayers you pray in secret are the prayers that, prayers that carry power. Sometimes you're not going to get an instant result. But if the body begins to warm, keep praying. Sometimes we give up too quickly. Sometimes we give up too quickly and go, oh, God, you're not going to do it. God, where are you? And so we back off. We stop praying for the things that God has given us. Shut the door. Go back into prayer. Continue to pray. I believe in this season, God wants your miracle to come back alive. I believe in this season, God wants your dreams to come back alive. He wants your purpose to come back alive again. And for many of you, because of disappointment, you have locked your heart to the possibilities that are available for you in God. The hurt, the pain is all locked up in your heart. But God wants to unlock your heart tonight. I really believe that's the message tonight, is unlocking your heart. You know, those things that you've taken in prayer, 
you felt so much disappointment that it's never going to happen. They're never going to come to pass. The promises that have been spoken over your life, the dreams that you've dreamed, you, you ask yourself, where are they? Why are they not happening? It's because you've given up. You haven't followed it through. And so I want to encourage you to find your space. Come into that space with God and pick them back up again. Glory and Esther, will you just come and join with me? And so... I have a gift for you tonight. I think some of the team can help me. I have a gift for you tonight, and I want every one of you to have one. I want to use it as a prophetic action. If you can just hand them out, that's good. And while they're doing that, I just want Esther and um, Glory to come and sing a, a song over you. So when you get them, I just want you to hold them in your hand. You can take, you can open them, but hold them in your hand. <laughs> Don't do anything with them. Just hold them in your hand. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. And I will make room for you to do.
lock is locked because tonight I feel prophetically that we're going to unlock the lock together because I believe God is going to unlock your heart again to the things that you thought was dead to the things that you thought had gone forever to the things that you thought that was hopeless to the things you that you thought was an impossibility just feel there's somebody here and you've had a miscarriage time and time and time again and you've put it down you've got it God it will never happen to me God I'm never gonna have a child my time clock is clicking and I just feel tonight that God's saying pick it back up pick it back up that prayer that you once had to have a baby that God's given you. Don't let go of the dreams that God's given you. Don't let the enemy come in and take what is rightfully yours. If God has promised you that in the first place, guess what? He's going to give it to you again. If God says it is going to happen, it's going to happen. But all is well with my soul. All is well with my soul. I just want you to take your luck and believe that all things are possible and that your dead dreams can come back to life. So, Father, as we turn the lock tonight, oh God, Father, I pray that every heart will be unlocked in this place, that every dream will come alive again, oh God, that every vision, oh God, every promise, oh God, spoken over every woman's life in this building will come back to life again. As a Father, Lord, we give you our hearts tonight, oh God. Father, we create space for our miracle, oh God tonight Lord and Father we say come come oh God come have your way in us again oh God we lay everything down before you we lay everything down before you Father have your way in this place oh God in your mighty name we pray Amen
You know, they say the graveyard is the richest place on earth. You know why? Because there are so many women and men who die without writing the books that they were meant to write, without painting the pictures that they were meant to paint. You know, there was such a powerful act to unlock that padlock. There was a significance in that, and I hope you don't underestimate that tonight. You know what? They say sharing your testimony helps you to heal. They say it brings us closer together. It's an absolute honor to introduce our next speaker. She's an author, she's a speaker, and she's planted in this house. Can we please welcome Jasmine Beverly as she comes up to share tonight? Lord, we praise you, we worship you, we exalt you. You Lord of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. You are the I am, the I am, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Your name is Yahweh. Father Lord, you are our God, our Savior, our healer, our protector. You Lord are awesome. You Lord are wonderful. You, there's no one before you, there is no one after you, there's no one with you, Lord Jesus. At the mention of your name, Lord, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is. Lord, you Lord are mighty, you Lord are Yahweh, Adonai Elohim, Father Lord we praise you, Father Lord we worship you, we exalt you Lord Jesus, there is no other name but Jesus, there is no other name but Jesus, Father Lord we worship you, Father Lord we praise you, Father Lord receive our glory, receive the glory Lord Jesus, receive the honour Lord Jesus, receive the praise Lord Jesus, Father Lord we come into your presence tonight, we say thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings, and thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we pray that you will open our eyes to hear, to see you. Open our ears to hear you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to us, Lord, in a new way, in a new dimension, Lord Jesus. Reveal yourself to us, Lord. Reveal yourself to us, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, Lord, take control. Take control, Lord Jesus. Take control, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I hope Esther and Gloria can help me tonight. Yes, you who
worship you, Lord Jesus. Receive our praise, Lord. Receive our praise, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'll first like to thank Apostle John and Prophet Tess Lakeisha for being great pastors, for being great leaders, for being great friends. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. Thank you for what you're doing. You're a great, great woman of God. And I'm so honored to know you. I'm so honored to call you my friend. Thank you so much. I also like to honor Radhika as well. You are a great woman of God. Woo. Thank you so much for being a great friend. You are awesome. You are wonderful. I learn from you all the time. So thank you so much. God bless you. Amen, amen, and amen. I'm so excited to be here this evening. The theme resonates with me so greatly. Unlocking the padlock of your heart. Amen. And this padlock, it can represent different forms and formats. It could be those hidden gifts, those hidden talents that you've locked, that you've, you've kept away. Amen. It could be those breakthroughs that will lead to the greatest blessing, those miracles that will cause an, an amazing act to happen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And who knows that God can unlock that padlock within a moment. He can unlock that padlock within a second before you can even blink. Amen. As a child of God, as a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, it's important to know that God can change your life instantly. Amen. It doesn't need to take years. It doesn't need to take months. It doesn't need to take centuries, decades. God can change your life in a moment, right now, in a second. And we see this in the lives of individuals in scripture. We see this in Abraham. We see this in Sarah, Hannah, Esther, Ruth, Jabez, Peter, David, and the list goes on, right? We see this so on and so on in scriptures because there is no story that God cannot change. Amen. 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 There's no story God cannot change because there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that is too hard for God. Amen. 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 Let's have a look at Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. That's my son. <laughs> Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Amen. Amen. I think we might have it on our, ah, oh, there we go. Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Amen. I just love this scripture. Is there anything too hard for me? This is God asking. He's saying, I am the Lord, the God of, of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Imagine God asking you that. How would you respond? <laughs> and if we go backwards. If we go to verse 17, this is the response. It's a few verses up. This is the response of this question. It says, ah, Lord God, behold, you made the heavens and the earth with your great power and your outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. Amen. There is nothing too hard for our God. Amen. And therefore we shouldn't limit him to what he can do. We shouldn't limit him to, uh, for asking big things to what he can do, what he can't do, because there's nothing God cannot do. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So for those of you who are taking notes today, if you are, the title of this message is Transformation. Amen. Amen. And I'm believing this will be a new season for you. I believe in that you will begin to walk with your head held high into new places, into new levels. And believe in that God, that doors will open before your eyes. And believe in that miracles will take place in, uh, before you. And believe in that testimonies will take place in your house in the mighty name of Jesus. That this will be a new season. That this will be a new level in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Amen. So I'm going to be sharing my story with you, my journey, my life, not my whole life, but a chapter of my life where I'd walked away from an emotionally abusive marriage and found freedom. Amen. You know, what happens to you in life does not define you. It is not who you are. You know, so often in life, us people, especially women, can get so caught up in what happens to us in life that we let it define us, that we, the circumstances of life, we let it label us. Whether good could be good and it could also be bad as well. And it's not always us labeling us. Sometimes others label you, right? And we see this so on and so on again in scriptures. If we look at 2 Kings verse 4, 2 Kings verse 4 verse 1. It says, I'll wait for it to come up. I like this scripture. So 2 Kings verse 4, perfect. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. Amen. So she was labeled as being the wife of the sons of the prophets. She was labeled by her circumstance. And if, if you keep reading through this scripture, actually she was not named. We don't know her name. We don't hear her name. She was just labeled as the wife of the sons of the prophets. And when Elijah speaks to her, it's, she's addressed as woman, right? She, instead of her name. If we go down more to verse 8, this is the story of the Shunammite lady, Shunammite woman that prophetess Lakeisha had read the, the full story. You know, what I love about God is where God is, there's, there's one. There's one message. Amen. So I didn't know that Prophetess Lakeisha was going to speak about her until just a day ago and she was telling me, sharing with what she was researching. And I said, oh my gosh, me too. I'm doing the same thing. You know, but where the presence of God is, it's always one. Amen. So if we scroll, if we scroll down, if we go down to verse 8, so 2 Kings 8, 2 Kings verse 8, okay, now it happened one day that Elijah went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and we'll pause there, so she too was defined by who she was, she was a, other translations say well-to-do women, here it says notable women, amen, so she was defined by her wealth, and later on, she's defined by where she lives. So we call her the Shunammite woman. And we all know her as that, the Shunammite woman. It's just like saying the Wimbledonite woman. The Croydonite, I'm from Croydon, so the Croydonite woman. Amen? It doesn't, it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. But that's how we know her. And that's how she is defined all throughout the scripture. Another one is the woman at the well. We all know the woman at the well. We talk about her, the woman at the well, the woman at the well, but what was her name, right? We know her as the woman at the well that had multiple husbands. And if we, I think that's John 4, verse 7. John 4, verse 7, it says, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, so she too was labeled as, where, as the area that she is in. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Amen. So it's not just us that define ourselves. Sometimes people define us. Right? But then at the same time, we define ourselves. We define ourselves as being a doctor, a lawyer, a solicitor, a teacher, a wife, a mother, a single mother, a daughter, a friend, an orphan, and so on. We define ourselves by our situation, by what we are, what we do, what we, what we don't have. Amen? But that is not who we are. The situations and the labels and the circumstances of life is not who we are. But rather, we are daughters of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
We are queens. We are his to his kingdom. Amen. We are called for a special mission, a special purpose. We are destined for greatness. Amen. We are equipped for greatness. We are a royal priesthood, a peculiar person, a holy generation. Amen. We have been, uh, we have been saved by the grace of God. Amen. We are loved. We are beautiful. We are equipped for greatness. We are strong. We are courageous. We are bold. Amen. We are his daughters. And therefore... Before I continue with this message, let us take a moment to acknowledge ourselves as daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let us take a moment to acknowledge ourselves as, as his special daughters. And if you want to stay seated, that's fine. But let's take a moment to sit with a new oomph. Let's take a moment to readjust our clothing as his daughters. Amen. So let us take a moment to... Amen. I can see... <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know, in life, we have to encourage ourselves. We have to empower ourselves. You cannot wait for somebody to, to encourage you when you can encourage yourself. You know, the first person to encourage yourself should be you. Amen? And there, there were seasons in my life which had felt so dark, as if there was no one else around, as if I was walking in a dark tunnel. I was in my own thoughts, my own mind. It, it, like there was, there was nothing else but darkness. But I had to encourage and empower myself. Amen. I had to strengthen myself in the Lord. I love in the book of Samuel, where David had found himself in a great distress. It says in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. It says, David was greatly distressed because of the men because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter, bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord. Amen. And that translation is similar. David found strength in the Lord. If we look at other translations, it says, David took courage in the Lord. And another translation says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. So we have to, in these moments of crisis, in these moments of great despair, we ought to encourage ourselves and empower ourselves in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So as I will be sharing my story, I am going to be jumping back and forth. But I pray that you will be able to follow along with me. Amen. So I had wanted to marry a, a godly man. Right? I don't have a list, I don't have a type. But if, if a man had a heart of God, then that would be fine. Because a man that loves God, a good man that loves God, will surely love, love his wife. Right? Now, that is what I'd prayed for, that is what I'd longed for. But who knows that not all which is good is God. There's a fine... Amen. There's a, there's a fine line when seeing something which is good and believing that that is God. And I'd got into this place where I thought I had prayed. I thought that, oh, this, this must be good. This must be God. This must be what I, the, the path that I ought to go down. You know, he was a godly man. He knew the Bible inside out. So he would tell you how Ob Obadiah will... The, the chapter in Obadiah links to Genesis and how Genesis links to Revelation and this and that. He knew the Bible inside out, right? He, when you would hear him pray or talk, everything just seemed good, you know? So I had prayed about it. I had believed that this must be good and those around me supported me, encouraged me and said, yes, he's a good man. He will look after you. And... The, the pastor as well had prophesied, as we do, had prophesied and had, had a dream that this man was my husband, right? So he told me, yes, this is good, this is God, this is, I had this dream and he, he's your husband and, and he will look after you. So, so he was 10 years older than I was, so a lot of people said he will look after you, he'll treat you well, he's, he's wise, right? Anyway, fast forward and we got married. And we didn't suffer from first-year marriage problems. You know, for those that are married, you 
often, and even those that are not married, if you were to go to a single seminar, you often hear about the first year of marriage problems, that in your first year of marriage, there's going to be lots and lots and lots of problems. But then after a while, it gets better and gets better. But we didn't suffer from this type of um, problem. Right, this was something a lot deeper. This was a hidden abuse that nobody could see, nobody knew. It was covered up. It was an abuse that, not, that could not be identified. Amen. And it did, I didn't even recognize it myself. And this type of abu abuse pushed me later into A&E. So it made it extremely hard when nobody saw what was going on, when no one saw how much I was hurting. We would go to church and, you know, you smile, you dress up. But nobody really saw the pain. No one really saw what was happening because, obviously, he too dressed up. And everything was good and holy and right. Amen. So it was very, very, very hard. And some of you here today may be in a situation where you feel no one sees you, where no one sees what you were going through or what you had gone through. But I would like to tell you that God sees. God sees the unseen. He sees the emotional, the physical, the spiritual wounds. Amen. And not only does he see, but God has promised to, to wipe away your tears. God has promised to heal your heart. Amen. Amen. We see this in a beautiful promise from God in Revelation 21 verse 4. Revelation 21 verse 4. It says, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen. There'll be no more death. There'll be no more mourning. No more crying. No more pain. Revelation 21, verse 4. Amen. So emotional abuse can be subtle and deceptive or explicit and manipulative. Either way, it eats away at the victim's self-esteem. It eats away at the, the victim's mind and they begin to doubt themselves. They begin to doubt their reality. And that is exactly what happened to me. He said he loved me, but I would cry for hours and hours and he would sit there and ignore because I, I should have been crying because I'd done wrong. So I should have been in tears, right? So he would sit there and ignore. And I felt trapped. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. Nobody could see. It's, a, it's an abuse that affects the mind. So no one could see what was really going on. And it, it felt as if there was no escape. And there had been a lot of arguments, a lot of disagreements, and these arguments consisted of a phrase or a saying or a word called gaslighting. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this word gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of abuse. It's, it's where the perpetrator or the abuser would sow self-doubt, sow confusion in the victim's mind that they begin to doubt their reality where they begin to doubt what is really happening right now, their perceptions on life. Amen. Amen. And on, this, on one particular occasion, we had been in an argument, and there was a lot of gaslighting. And the gaslighting is, oh, I didn't say that. Right? When you know that clearly you'd heard. Oh, you're making things up. Oh, this is, you're imagining things. This is not what, what really happened. Amen. And on this particular occasion, I was holding a mug because I was drinking tea. So I was holding my mug and then I was just so angry that with the gaslighting going on and on and on that I'd dropped the mug, I threw the mug on the floor. And from that moment onwards, I was labelled as having anger issues, right? So I was, I had anger issues. And he would mention it to people that, oh, she, I'm scared of her, right? And... Um, it, from that moment onwards, it was a downward spiral of emotional torture. By twisting my words and misrepresenting my thoughts, my motives, my reality was being redefined and I didn't even know it. And I remember it had gotten so bad that at one point I found myself in A&E. And it was about 2 a.m. in the morning when I was sitting there and a doctor came to call me and speak with me. 
And he said, he, God bless him, he just allowed me to speak. So he said, okay, how did you get here? What has been going on? What had happened? So I began to explain to this doctor what, why I was there at this time. And I began to pour out my heart to him. I spoke about the, the marriage, the church, the fellow leaders, because I had been, I was in a leadership position. I'd been ordained as a deaconess a few years before then. And sadly, nobody really supported. So I poured out everything to, to this doctor. He just, God bless him, he just allowed me to speak. And I went on and on and on about everything that happened and how everything had crumbled down, broken down. And the doctor gave me some advice. He recommended counselling. He recommended antidepressants. He also said that I could stay in A&E for, the, for, the, for that particular night. So I remember a few days later, I was prescribed these antidepressants. And I'd been taking them, and I felt, you know, I felt okay. But there was still something that wasn't right. I still didn't have that peace, that calmness within me. I was still trying to make sense of what I had gone through, what had happened that, within that year. And you know, it's only God that can bring that perfect peace into your life, right? So after a week, I decided to stop taking them, even though the doctor said you can't because it does something with your brain. But I decided to stop taking them. Now, some of you here may be on antidepressants, and I wouldn't want you to suddenly stop because you came to this conference and Jasmine Beverly said she stopped taking them. Amen. I had been in, I had this conviction, this deep conviction within me that actually this isn't what you, this isn't what you need, that you need healing, that this antidepressants is not going to work. And I'd had a man of God that I'd met through a counseling line also praying, standing in agreement with me that this is that you that stop taking the antidepressants, right? We're going to pray through this. We're going to pray about your mental health. We're going to pray about the situation. We're going to pray for healing. So I had stopped taking it. So if some of you here are on it, I would like to pray that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords will give you divine healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will speak to you, that God will touch your heart in the mighty name of Jesus and give you healing in your mind in the mighty name of Jesus. But please do pray and I encourage you to still take it and pray, right? Because it is only God that can bring that divine healing. So I remember saying that God is my doctor and God will heal me. So from that moment onwards, I replaced, the holy, I replaced the antidepressants with the Holy Communion, the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I began taking the Holy Communion every day, sometimes once, sometimes twice, sometimes three times, sometimes I don't remember how many times, because in the book of, in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26, it says, as often as you take it, you proclaim or you declare, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again, as often. So I ran with that and I said, okay, as often, I'll take it as often as I needed. And as I take it, I proclaim his death until he comes again. Amen. So I began taking it and as I took the bread, I said, Lord, I'm taking your body. And as your body goes through my body, I am healed. And I lifted up the cup and I said, Lord, I'm drinking your blood. And as I drink your blood, your blood will go through my blood vessels and therefore I'm restored. Amen. Amen. And as I, as I did this every day, I began to receive my healing. And God was, God was doing a new thing. You know, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. I love this scripture, Isaiah 43 verse 18 to, 90, 18 to 19, and it says, behold, it says, see, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Amen. It says, I am making a way in the, the wilderness. I'm making streams in the wasteland. Amen. And from that moment onwards, God was transforming my life. God was doing something new. Amen. And there are Holy Communion's over there, so if at any time or at the end, feel free to go and take some Holy Communion 
amen, and God will heal you as you take it. And as you take it, you are proclaiming his death until he comes again, amen. There is light at the end of the tunnel, amen. There is light at the end of the tunnel. If we look at the life of Job, God blessed the last part of his life even more than he had blessed the first. Irrespective of who you are, challenges will come, right? God will give you things that the enemy will come to try and take away. And the word of God says it in John 10 verse 10, it says he comes to steal, kill and destroy, right? But there is light at the end of the tunnel. The challenge will come and it will go. If you hand over your challenge to God, he will take care of it. It doesn't matter what you have been through. It doesn't matter what has happened. It doesn't matter the pain, the trauma, the upset, the grief. You can rise again. Amen. Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 8. Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 8. It talks about, it's an Ezekiel story, let these dry bones come alive. And we often hear it, right? Father, Lord, I just pray that every woman here, that any dry bone will come alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to just declare that over yourself, that dry bones come alive. Dry bones come alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Dry bones come alive in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name, amen. I love Job 14 verse 7. Job 14 verse 7. And it says, there is a hope There is hope for a tree that has been cut short, right? There is hope for a tree that has been cut short. So no matter what has happened, no matter the trauma, no matter the upset, no matter the cut down, you can rise again. You can come back. The real you, the hidden you, the the, the hidden gifts, the hidden talents, the hidden passions, no matter the trauma, no matter the upset, you can come back. No matter what you've experienced. And if we look at the universe, darkness comes, the night, nighttime comes, right? But the sun will always rise again. Amen. The sun always comes again in the morning. So no matter what has happened, there is a there is light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. So I had started, this is my healing journey now. I had started a six weeks course called Taking Back Control. And this course was where I learned about the mind, the brain. It's where I heard phrases like triggers, early warning signs, red flags. You know, you don't often hear these words in church, right? I mean, more now, and actually you do in Rig and Elam. But before then, before I'd come here, you don't often hear these type of words. And I I, I did this course because I had to empower myself. I had to encourage myself in the Lord. And what had happened was the healing process was not easy. I had suddenly been labeled as the perpetrator. I was the one that had done my husband wrong. I was the one that had caused this all to happen, right? I was labeled as having postnatal depression, and that's what I was going through, and I I needed to manage it. And so it was really, really difficult. I, I went through a season where people that I thought would have supported, people who I thought would have understood, didn't. So it was very, very heartbreaking. And I had to remind myself that God knows. God knows the, the, what, had, what really happened, right? That if no one else could see, I know that God, God can see what happened. I had to remind myself that it was not my fault. And I was retraining my brain and mind that instead of seeing him as who he was to me, I rather viewed him as my son's father. I viewed him as somebody that shared my son's life with me. Amen. To also retrain my brain and mind, I started declaring every morning and every evening without fail healing declarations. So I would say, I am I'm free. I am healed. I am no longer in bondage. I have been set free. Amen. So I'm a, I'm a maths teacher. I tutor maths. So when I'm having a, when I'm meeting with a parent to just to go through the contract of my tuition, I explain to them that it's not only maths, but I will give them a, 
scripture, a memory verse. A memory verse to learn, and then the following week, before the lesson, before we start maths, the student will, re re will, will recite this memory verse to me. Amen. And if the, if the student and the parent is not Christian, I will give them a positive affirmation, which is usually scripture without the, without the verse, right? It's usually, <laughs> I'm bold, I'm strong, I'm courageous, I will not fear. Amen. Without, with, <laughs> without the extra parts. But the reason why I do this is for the student to empower and encourage themselves, yeah. right? So often students and unfortunately adults like us, parents, we can get so caught up in life that we forget to encourage ourselves. Yeah. Now, people of the world, if you watch some of these people that have made it in life, unbelievers, if you hear what some of them say, and they, if you, I remember watching the video and I just, I wanted to see what this man's story was. And he said that every morning, every evening, he said positive affirmations, right? It's so, it's so interesting that the people of the world do it. They, they recognize the power of the tongue. That, that they, they, they say, I, I wake up in the morning, I say, I'm, I'm going to be successful. And actually it works for them, Right? It, it works for them because they've understood that there's power in the tongue. And how much more us as believers, as children of God, where it says in his word that, there is, that death and life is in the power of the tongue, right? How much more us, we need to be, we ought to be encouraging ourselves in the word of God. Yeah, so Amen. So after this course on taking back control, I had done a six-week course called another six-week called, called Mindfulness. And this is where I learned again about the mind and the thought process. So this was something I was really excited about, right? Because I'd never studied this before, the, the brain, the beautiful creation that our Lord Jesus has given to us. So I started this course and... Right, I need water. I started this course and it was really really, really powerful. I learned, I don't know if there's any doctors here or any neuroscientists, I'm not sure, but I learned about the mind and how the mind, the brain works. And did you know that 80% of what you thought about yesterday is the same today? 80% of what you thought about yesterday is the same today. There are hardly any changes unless if you make it. In the brain, there are there are pathways, and these pathways are be being created every single day. The more you think about something, the more the pathway is created, yeah. right? So I was learning, I'm a mathematician, but I was learning all about science, all about the brain, the mind, and I, I did this really to, to encourage myself. I did this really to help myself, because faith without works is dead, right? Yeah. You cannot pray for something and yet not do anything. You cannot pray for a job and not apply. I could not pray for healing in my mind, but yet think negative things. I had to change, I had to make a choice to change my thinking. So whenever I would get angry at how this happened, how, how this happened, how did I get here? Whenever I would fall into, or oh, why me? I had to stop, I had to pause, and I had to reflect on something else. Instead, you know, energy follows thought, and I didn't want to give energy. I didn't want my brain, I didn't want those pathways to still be being created, right? And I love the book, I love Joyce Meyer's book, Battlefield of the Mind. Now, this has been a best-selling book for 27 years. And if you've not read it, I encourage you to read that book, Battlefield of the Mind. I love what she says when she says, you need to think about what you were thinking about, right? You need to think about what you were thinking about. You need to make a conscious decision, decision to think about the thoughts that you were thinking. Amen? The word of God says, God does not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. And what is a sound mind? What is not a sound mind? A sound mind is not depression. 
A sound mind is not anxiety. A sound mind is not overthinking, right? A sound mind is peace. A sound mind is clarity. Amen? Amen. So six weeks later, I had completed this course on mindfulness. And I could see the impact. I could see the strength. I could see the recovery. I could see that I was becoming. I could see that God was doing a new thing in my life. That he was forming me. And it's like a butterfly. A butterfly will go through two to five weeks of being a caterpillar, depending on the butterfly that it is. And during these two to five weeks, this butterfly will be forming. It will be in the process of becoming. It's like gold, for another example. Gold is so beautiful when you look at it. But for it to become gold, it has gone through the fire. It has gone through that refining process. So often in life, we, we need to go through a process. We need to go through something that may not, look, not be our plan. It may not look pretty. But we need to go through something to be who God has called us to be. I was in a leadership meeting today that past, uh, Apostle John was holding. And I, I just love what he said. He said um, that often the pain is, you, uh, there's often there is a reason for the pain. There is a reason for why you have gone through what you've gone through. And it reminded me of a saying, which is, there is, a, there is not a testimony without a test. There is not a message without a mess. There is not a triumph without a trial, right? So often we, we, we go through things and we question why me or we think that God is not around, but really it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the process of you becoming. Amen? Faith cannot fix what you cannot face. Faith cannot fix what you cannot face. So you need to have the boldness to stand tall and say, no matter what I'm going through, I choose to serve God. No matter this tunnel, I will go through it and I will come out of the other end. No matter if this happens, no matter if I do the pregnancy test, I'm not pregnant. No matter if the job fails, no matter if I don't get the promotion, I choose to serve God. Amen? Amen. Actions speak louder than words, but consistency speaks louder than both. Actions speak louder than words, but consistency speaks louder than both. So it's about being consistent in your faith and your trust in God, right? It reminds me of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the book of Daniel, Daniel 3. If you've not read it, I encourage you to read it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, what happened was King Nebuchadnezzar had set a decree, had made false images, false gods, I'm just paraphrasing. And he set a decree that everyone should bow down to these gods. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said no, they refused to bow down. And they refused in the background initially. Now, it was some people that had said, that went to King Nebuchadnezzar and said, there's three Hebrew, Hebrew boys that are, not going to, that are not bowing down. And then King Nebuchadnezzar called them to come, to come forward, and he actually gave them another chance. He said, bow down. And they said, we will not bow down. In fact, they said, we do not need to, we do not need to debate with you on this matter. Right? We will not bow down because we know that our God will save us. Can you imagine that consistency, that even being faced in front of the king, they said no because we know our God will save us. So King Nebuchadnezzar had said that they would be put into the fire. The fire would be six, seven times, six times hotter, seven times hotter than um, seven, than it was, than it normally is. And they again refused and they said, we know our God will save us, we're not bound down. And even if our God does not deliver us, even if our God does not save us, we will still not bow down. Amen? Amen. Imagine being put right in front of the fire and making a conscious decision that actually, I, I don't mind going into the fire right now. They said, even if our God does not deliver us, he will still not bow down. Amen. And they went into the fire. 
But what happened after? And if we look at Daniel 3, verse 30. Daniel 3, verse 30. What we see is that as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, we see that they were promoted, that King Nebuchadnezzar had promoted them. Right? We'll see that in Daniel 3, verse 30. 30. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. Amen. They went in the fire and see what happened after. They got promoted by the king. And therefore, it's, you, you need to go, sometimes in life, you need to go through things to be who God has called you to be. Amen. So dur- during my healing process, I wrote, I wrote a book called The Unseen Veil. Now, the reason why I wrote it is because I realized that although women are speaking up, there are a lot of women who, who don't, who feel labeled, condemned, criticized, stigmatized, and even worse, silenced. Right? So I wrote this book so that women can be empowered, women can, be, uh, can speak up about issues, about circumstances, and not be left to feel silenced. Now, I had a woman that, uh, that had said to me, called me during my healing process and said, look, I went through the same thing that you went through, but don't worry, it's okay. You will, you will, you, you will come out of it, but just, just be quiet. Just, she said, just move on. Don't look back. Don't speak about it. Just keep going and just ignore that it ever happened, right? And this is when I was writing and what she was saying that I shouldn't speak out that I shouldn't talk about it. But I said, no, I will not be silenced. Because as, as women stay silenced, we, everyone will go through the same thing, right? No one will speak up. No one will feel empowered. Amen. Unfortunately, abused women and often Christian women feel stigmatized to speak out about abuse. It can be any abuse, not just in a relationship by any abuse but they feel stigmatized to speak out of speak out about abuse due to fear to due to fear of what people will say due to fear of what people will think amen and sometimes it's due to fear of what the church would say right so this book the unseen veil just details quite deeply issues that I went through and how I had gone through the marriage and also received my healing as well. Revelation speaks about overcoming, right? It speaks about overcoming by the word of your testimony. Amen. And through writing, through writing the book, through speaking out more and more, I overcame. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you've been hurt, if you've been experienced pain, experienced trauma, experienced grief, then God wants to heal you. God wants to bring, wants you to experience freedom. And this freedom is not just a half freedom where you're okay one day and the next day you're not okay. Or you're okay, but you're really, really not okay. Right? We, We know ourselves women. Amen. God wants you to experience that total freedom, that total restoration, that total peace, that divine peace that he has. And God will not only heal you, but he will restore you. He will restore the lost years, the lost opportunity, the lost blessings. Amen. He will restore the pain to peace. He promises to give us double blessings for our former troubles if we put our trust in him. Amen. Amen. Prophetess Lakeisha, do you mind just coming up? Amen. There are some of you here who have experienced pain, who have experienced loss, who have experienced grief. And can I have the worship team as well? If that is you, if you're sitting there with this pain inside, if you're sitting there with this, this grief, and this can be childhood Right? This can be pain from childhood that we have kept for many, many, many years. 
If you're sitting there and you want freedom, you want peace, you want healing, you don't want to go back, right? You don't want to. If you're sitting there and you have this burden inside of you saying, yes, I want to experience freedom, total freedom, then in a moment I'm going to ask you to come forward. And we've got leaders, we've got a prophetic team that are going to pray for you. Amen. Yeah, we just uh, want to lay hands on you and um, our prophetic team is just going to come and pray over you, speak words over you. Um, if you do feel that anything that Jasmine um, has an awesome testament, anything's resonated in you and you're feeling like actually you want to take communion, we do have communion on the side for you. Be free to just go do that. Um, it's between you and God. It's not between you and anybody else. Just come and, and do that. And as the team comes, and we're going to go back into a time of worship. And I just encourage you, if you want to have prayer, you want us to pray for anything that um, you want resurrecting in your life, anything that you want to bring and just put before God, I just urge you to come and do that. And so as we do that um, to go into a time of prayer, um, Gloria's got a song, um, which is her testimony. She's going to sing it over you. And I'm just going to say, come, come to the altar, come to the cross. So um, it's, I coming to this meeting and serving you guys, I, I had an, uh, a clue of the speakers and um, my story is very similar to what you've just heard. Um, I, um, almost exactly the same actually. So um, I uh, wrote a song um, as a testimony of what God, in, what God did in my life in uh, um, order to set me from, free from that abusive situation. And um, basically I was um, in my kitchen and it was, uh, it was a desperate situation. And um, my Bible was in front of me and uh, I just said, God, you have to speak, you have to speak. And he gave me Isaiah 62. And in particular, uh, the bit where it says, um, you shall be known by a new name. Your name, Hezeva, your, your land married. And um, as you continue reading that whole uh, passage, it speaks of um, your, you will no longer be termed forsaken or forgotten. So that for me was the, the light bulb moment which changed everything. Um, and eventually, kind of God got me out of that abusive marriage. But... Um, yeah, uh, I'll just sing the song and um, yeah, we'll go into ministry time. Just from the top, sorry. It's right back from the top, yeah. me in the face and said you loved me lies 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 surrounded by pride ashamed of the truth that would have set us both free and smiles faces words your illusion impressive art pretending to want a solution such a beautiful show how we fooled all we know i paid my to hide the disgrace of a broken dream behind closed doors another man lives within these walls but no one knew just who he Not even me Trust in him completely Even when he hurt me Over and over again Such 
such a beautiful soul was anything real you should have let me go many tears ago you punished me looked me in the face and said you love me you Oh, saving grace, how sweet the sound that told me who I was. A queen worth serving, a lover worth loving, a gift worth dying for. You made your choice. God's truth, your power is broken, my soul is free, I'm free at last, and living my best life, you see, God looked me in the face and said, God looked me in the face and said, God looked me in the face and said, God looks me in the face and said, yeah, he loves me. you in the face and says, God looks you in the face, God looks you in the face and says, he loves you. time of worship, a time of ministry. If you want prayer and you want to see the meet with the face of Jesus tonight, just come, just come to the front.
front. We're going to lay hands on you. Whatever your need is, whatever you're after, whatever you want, just come and meet with the Lord tonight. So I just, just stand as we go into worship. We're going to go back into that place of intimacy with God. We're just going to continue to worship. We're going to continue to let God have his way. We're going to continue to see what God's going to do. We're going to continue to believe and stand with you for those things to come alive again.
Spirit's here. We're going to baptize someone. Is that all right? If you'd said to me a few months ago that I'd be doing baptisms with a bottle of water, I never would have believed you. But you know, when God's on the move and the Holy Spirit is doing what He's doing, sometimes you need to say, you know what, we're going to do this. Here's what the Holy Spirit told me. I said this to Joseph. I said, we're going to set the baptismal tank up and we're going to start baptizing people every service. But you know what? For tonight, we're going to baptize with a bottle of water again. Is that all right? Before we do that, I want to do one thing. And I'm going to ask Keisha just to come and join me as well when she finishes praying. But if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then Jesus died upon the cross and he was buried in a tomb and he rose again from the dead three days later and is seated with his Father in heaven. And the Bible says that all who will repent and turn to Jesus will be saved. If they will turn from their sins, they will be born again. If you call upon the name of the Lord, you can be saved. And if you're here tonight and you say, Pastor John, I need to get born again, then I want to pray for you. If that's you, I want to give an opportunity. Is there anyone here who would say, I need to get born again tonight? Is there anyone else here? Anyone you say, yeah, that's for me tonight. I need to get born again. I'll give you a moment longer. Is there anyone tonight? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Is there anyone tonight you say, yeah, I need Jesus to forgive me? Just turn to the person next to you and say, is he talking to you? If they said yes, give me a wave. Was there someone you say, yeah, I need to get saved tonight? Is that, is that for you? Yeah, come on, just give them a round of applause. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. We're going to let the Holy Spirit do what He wants to do. Yeah, yeah, keep keep it. Yeah, come on. Come on. Here, I want you. Yeah, come on. Come come all the way up. Come on, come on, come on. Jesus, Jesus, come, 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 come. Everyone reach out a hand. I want everyone to pray this with me. I want you guys to pray this with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I turn from sin and I turn to you. And I am born again. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can we give the Lord a clap? Yeah, I saw you dancing earlier and I noted that you um, had a yellow streamer and I just felt, the Lord just brought that to my mind and I just felt the Holy Spirit say, um, it's yellow because you are God's sunshine. You are his only sunshine. He will make you happy. And I just want God, you to know that God loves you. He values you. He sees when you worship to Him. He sees when you dance to Him. He sees 
how it makes you happy. But you know what's even better? It makes him happy. And I just want to declare, you are his sunshine. You are his sunshine. He created the earth. He created the sun. And just think how big that is. And he says, you are my sunshine. I see you. I see you dancing. And he says, you don't realize how powerful you are when you dance before me. Because when you dance before me, darkness fades away. Because when there's darkness, the good thing about darkness is the sun shines. And he says, you are my sunshine, daughter. You are my sunshine. What's your name? Nyla Rose. Nyla, is that? Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose, do you turn from your sins and turn to Christ? Yes. Today, do you confess Jesus as your Lord? Yes. And so, Nyla Rose, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a clap? Come on. <laughs> You know, I don't think it's by chance that that was sparkling water. (laughs) You know, I think there's something about your life that the Lord says in this season, I'm releasing a fresh sparkle on the inside of you. And so, Father, we release it now in Jesus' name. Fill her up right now in Jesus' name. Never the same again in the name of Jesus. Just pray in tongues for a moment. Pray in the spirit for a moment. Come on. Kura bahala masia bahala masoto kura baye. Yeah, come on, come on, sing it out. How many of us know that Jesus heals? And so right now, I believe God is healing some back pains, some lower back pains, something to do with the discs. If that's you, just put your hands up. That's you. There's a lady, whoever's around them, just pray for them right now. Come to the front and let Apostle lay hands on you. If that's you, come to the front. I see, I see in the spirit, I see that there's um, something to do with the chest. And it's like here, it's like there's something, it's like there's something in there and they can't identify what it is. If that's you, lift up your hands just in in this part of the, I don't know what to call this, in this part of the, the, the body. If that's you, just come, just come to the front, just come to the front. I, I see, I see somebody here that it's um, diabetes, but it's diabetes that runs in the family. It's diabetes that runs in the family. It's, 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 it's come from your parents. It's, it's, it's a lineage thing. It's more than just diabetes, but it's, it's, it's like something, somebody put something on your family and you guys can't break it. If that's you, lift up your hands and come to the front. Come to the front if that's you. And if you have any sickness that you want us to pray for, come to the front right now. God, God is healing right now. God is healing right now. Come on, I want us to pray right now in this moment. Come on, just if you can speak in tongues right now, pray in this moment. Like we shift the atmosphere, that the atmosphere of healing will come into the room. Remande setai in Avan City. Ramande Lelevin setai Raman Soto. I know a God that 
does miracles. I know a God that does miracles. I know a God that doesn't fail. It's not if, but, or maybe. It's that you're going to leave this place with healed in the name of Jesus. I know when we call upon the name of Jesus, he answers. And so we're going to call upon the name of Jesus on behalf of these ones here. On the bar- of behalf of these ones at the front. And if you're in the prayer team, can you come and please pray for them? Raman says, hey, Raman Satai. Raman did it even Sutai and Raman Satai. Raman did it even say, we come against every spirit of diabetes. We come against every um, spirit of um, back pain. We come against every cancer. We come against every disease um, that's in the body of these people. And right now we command that, follow, there will be a healing across this place. Uh, there will be a healing across this place. Uh, and once you're done praying for them, ask them to test it out. I hear the spirit of the Lord. I hear the spirit of the Lord say that there's somebody here with a knee issue. Something with their knees. Something with your knees. That your knees are, it's like your knees are swollen. Right now, I believe the Lord is about to deflate your knees right now in the name of Jesus. Raman sete, Raman soto. Raman de 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 vensi, Raman de 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 vensu, Raman daya. He Raman de 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 vensi kaya na Raman sete. Raman da na Raman sete, Raman satai. If you're suffering with, if you're suffering with any ear issue, any ear issue right now, the Lord is going to heal you in this moment. I believe as even if as you come to the front, the Lord is going to heal you instantly. If you're suffering with any ear um, here, any ear issue, anything to do with your ears, I believe the Lord is about to instantly heal, heal you right now. Instantly heal you right now. God is on a move right now. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this moment. God is about to heal you. God is about to heal you. God is about to heal you. Hey, man, so told, and a man sat high. Hey, that man, that man, they live in Suya. Had a man so told, and a man sat high. Hey, that man, Saya. Reman Kai and a man sat. Anybody here suffering with arthritis? God is about to deal with that right now. He's about to deal with arthritis right now. You're about to leave healed. Healed and complete. There is no, there is no if, but, so maybe Jesus is doing it. We've seen deaf ears pop open. We've seen people hand their crutches over. What is this mountain that won't bow down at the name of Jesus? Jesus is on a move. He's healing right now. Don't miss your moment. Jesus is in the room. He is the healer. Hey, if you have crazy faith and you're wearing glasses right now, I believe God wants to give you 2020 vision. And I'm not joking here. God is on a move and there is no boundaries. So if you have crazy faith, take your glasses off and start testing it. God is about to breathe you new eyes. The Lord is on a move. Raman sete, Raman sai. When Jesus is in the room, why wouldn't you put your petition before him? So if you have faith, just take your glasses off. Raman de le le vensi kaya na man saya. He raman de le le vensi. So just check yourself for me. And... and What's that? Yeah. It's improved. Uh, th- there's a couple of people it's improved, but it's not completely healed. I want, I want us just to stand in agreement together. Will you just reach out a hand right across? If you're getting prayer as well, we're going to stand together. We have to take authority over what the enemy seeks to put on people's lives. It says that Jesus went around healing the sick, setting the captives free. And we give in so easily. We just say, okay, it's not the full miracle. Okay, next person, let's pray for them. And something inside of us has to begin to say, you know, we'll contend for the miracle. And so we take authority right now over this pain in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your healing power right now in the name of Jesus. Glorify your son. Glorify Jesus right now in this moment. And so we take authority over this sickness. Take authority over this pain right now in Jesus' name. And we release your healing power. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. 
Come Holy Spirit, heal right now. In the name of Jesus, come Holy Spirit. We thank you Holy Spirit. We thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit. There it is, more. More. More healed right now in Jesus' name. Here's what I, here's what I want you to do. All across this room, if you had pain in your body, I want you to check yourself right now. Not just here, but wherever you are. If you needed a healing, just check yourself. If you feel improvement or you feel something shift, give me a wave. If you say, yeah, I feel like something just changed, then give me a wave. If you've had a bit of breakthrough right now, just give me a wave. Is there anyone? We're going to pray one more time. I'm, it doesn't bother me. I can do this all night. Trust me, okay? I refuse to let the devil win. Who's with me in this? You say, yeah, I'm with you in this. Okay. Right now, we take authority over every sickness and disease in this building. Right now, in the name of Jesus, every demonic spirit, we cancel your assignment in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood right now in this house. Let every demon flee from where it came. It goes right now in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every pain, it goes right now in the name of Jesus. Your divine healing comes right now. something called skiliosis skiliosis if that's you come to the front for prayer skiliosis skiliosis come on let's keep praying let's keep praying let's keep contending we come against every spirit of infirmity we come against every spirit of sickness and we say it will bow down today to the name of Jesus get baptized as well hallelujah hallelujah can someone get me another bottle of water thank you Holy Spirit thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Jesus we thank you for this Precious lives tonight, Lord. Kuda mahala masia mahala masoto mahala masia mahala masia mahala masoto kuda mahala masia mahala mahala masia mahala masoto kuda mahala masia mahala and so Rose do you take Jesus to be your Lord and Savior yes I do 
Do you turn from your sins and turn to Christ? Yes, I do. And so, Rose, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise in this place. Father, fill it right now in Jesus' name. Fill it right now in Jesus' name. More of you right now. Jesus name Holy Spirit's in the room and so Madhu do you turn from your sins and turn to Christ do you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and so we baptize you now in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, give the Lord some praise in this place. Fill it right now, Holy Ghost. Let's sing this one more time. Come on. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the bones of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. Now you are raised to life. 
you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a shout. woman of God. She's a dean of a school and she's so excited to come and minister to every one of you. So go tell your friends. We will send out the Eventbrite link and get booked on. It's free. Tell everybody, come, it's free. You don't have to pay a penny. And so we're going to pray that one in. We're going to pray that every seat will be filled. And so I release you in the mighty name of the Father. I pray blessings upon you as you leave. I pray that your dreams will be of God, that he will give you heavenly downloads as you go to bed tonight. And so, Father, I pray right now over every mind in this place, oh God. Father, I pray right now that you'll fill it, oh God, with dreams, oh God. You'll fill it with heavenly thoughts, oh God. That you'll fill it, oh God, with such the purposes and the plans that you have over their lives, oh God. And so, Father, I pray right now over every mind in this place. Every torment will go, oh God, in your mighty name, oh God. And I pray peace over your sleep in your mighty name. So, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your um, Holy Spirit here in this place tonight, oh God. Lord, thank you for every lives we baptized here tonight, oh God. And Father, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh God. And so we release you. Be blessed. Have a great weekend. We are here at 11 o'clock Sunday morning. Our very own Esther is preaching.
just testify what the Lord's done for you. So, for one year, I was not able to even do this on my foot. And now tonight, I've been healed. Come on, Jesus. Who knows if you're a man and you're at a ladies' conference and you get healed. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord one more shout in this house? Come on. We celebrate his power tonight. Keisha. We have a tradition here. Who knows our tradition? <laughs> oh, yeah. Help yourself to biscuits, desserts. Toyosa can't wait to be released because that's where she's heading. Go buy yourself some merch. Go get a T-shirt. Go definitely go buy the, um, Jasmine's book. Um, it will be out there for you. Have we got one more? We've got another healing. Let's just, let's just testify. Come on. Come on. Give her a round of applause. What's God done for you? Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I received my healing in Jesus' name. As, um, as uh, Brother Joseph was on the stage and he said, um, remove your glasses. Uh, somebody in here, God wants to heal your, your sight. He wants to give you 20-20 vision. So because I usually have short sight and I can't see things too clear, that's far away. I decided to take off my glasses and then immediately I can see. I can see the stage and I just want to thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome, come on, Jesus. No, you do the tradition. Okay, tradition time. On a count of three, we're going to say get rigged. One, two, three. Get rigged! 